sharp. That's not Byron in the hat. That's Byron next to the hat. Well, welcome everybody. We're uh, excited to be here. We're excited to talk about some of the progress we've made on Everglades restoration, but also uh, some of the disappointment of some of the recent federal moves regarding. Um, I want to recognize we've got a lot of great people here. We've got DEP Secretary Sean Hamilton. Uh, we've got uh, Wes Brooks is our uh, CRO for the state of Florida. Uh, we have Chauncey Goss, chairman of the South Florida Water Management District. We have other board members, Scott Wagner, Ronnie Bergeron, uh, Ben Butler, Charlotte Roman, Jay Steinley, Jackie Thurlow Lipsis. We have Drew Bartlett, who's the executive director, South Florida Water Management District. And then we've got a number of captains for clean water, including Daniel uh, Andrews, who's the executive director, as well as Chris Whitman, uh, Eric Eichenberg, CEO of the Everglades Foundation. We have Senator Marco Rubio. We have Congressman Brian Mass, Congressman Brian Donalds, uh, both uh, representing different parts of South Florida. Um, it's good to be here. I, I will say, uh, and Ronnie Bergeron, you'll appreciate this. Uh, for Christmas, the First Lady's gift to me was a pair of boots made out of python captured in the Florida Everglades. So we've upped our python uh, capturing over the last couple years. Uh, I was able to highlight a fellow at the state of the state. In 2020, the winner of the python contest got nine pythons. 2021, this fellow got 41 pythons. And so we want to continue to be able to do that. It's very damaging what they do uh, to the ecosystem there. So we want to continue to put resources in for that. We're here today because uh, we have a lot of great Everglades projects, but really the crown jewel is this EAA reservoir project. And it's vitally important to reduce and even eliminate harmful discharges uh, to the Caloosahatchee and St. Lucie estuaries and for sending more water uh, to the Everglades and to Florida Bay. And that's why we were all very disappointed uh, that the Biden administration failed to dedicate any of the recently passed $1.2 trillion infrastructure funding to the EAA reservoir, not one dime going to this vital project. Um, in fact, none of the projects that were actually funded, which although we appreciate, uh, but none of them will provide meaningful reductions in harmful discharges to our estuaries uh, that the EAA reservoir would be able to do. And so today, we're all here united, uh, calling on the Biden administration to include at least $725 million for Everglades restoration in the upcoming FY23 budget request and to allocate the funds necessarily necessary to timely advance the EAA reservoir project. And so we need it funded. We also need it funded in due time so that we can actually do it now rather than have it drag on. So this project is a partnership between the state and the federal government. And in Florida, we've made this Everglades restoration project uh, our top priority. Florida is responsible for the construction of the water quality component of the project through a new stormwater treatment area, while the federal government is responsible for construction of the storage and conveyance components, including the reservoir itself. Now, Florida has prioritized state funding for the EAA reservoir project. 
which is why the South Florida Water Management District began construction on the STA a year ahead of schedule. But the federal government has failed to adequately fund their portion of the project and, in fact, recently announced that completion of their portion is delayed by 13 months. So the one-time investment announced earlier this month by the Biden administration was an opportunity for the federal government to kickstart the critically important EAA reservoir project. But instead, the funding was dedicated to other projects that, while part of Everglades restoration, uh, will not serve the same function of reducing harmful discharges from Lake Okeechobee or help us send more water south to the Everglades and to Florida Bay. So the federal government must step up. They must do their part. Uh, this is a priority for Floridians, um, really across the state, but particularly all throughout South Florida, and we want to see it uh, come to fruition. We are doing our part. President Trump was very helpful on this, and what I would tell him is, look, we're putting in money. Uh, we're not just asking you to do. Here's what we're doing, and he appreciated that. They did, I think, over $350 million in his final year in office, and we appreciate that very much. When I came into office in 2019, we said we were going to increase funding for Everglades and water quality by a billion dollars over what had been done the previous four years. Uh, well, the legislature has been very supportive of this. And if you look at what we requested in our budget, almost a billion dollars for Everglades and water quality. If we end up getting that, um, instead of increasing by just a billion over four years, we will have actually doubled the funding for Everglades and water quality, uh, re water resources projects from the previous four years. And so that's a huge commitment uh, that we were able to do. We were able to keep that commitment even in very uncertain times, uh, such as the 2020 um, legislative session. So we're proud of that, and we're going to continue to stand up um, and do it. So we will likely have about $3 billion uh, through the four years um, uh, that we, from the first four years of starting this this to, to these projects. It's really, really important. We want to continue to do that. And as I stand here today, 43 different Everglades restoration projects have broken ground, hit a major milestone, or finished construction since I took office in January of 2019. This includes the STA-1 East project right behind me, a 5,000-acre stormwater treatment area, which is a component of the restoration strategies plan and will improve Everglades water quality and send more clean water to the south. It also includes the state's portion of the EAA Reservoir Project, which is well underway, and projects across South Florida, like the final phase construction on the C-43 Reservoir and completion of the C-44 Reservoir and STA. Uh, so we are disappointed. It was a big missed opportunity uh, for, the, for the federal government to not have put just not even one dime that went to the EAA reservoir. But we're going to keep doing our part, and we're going to keep rallying to make sure uh, that we get the support we need uh, for the federal government. They've said that they would support, um, and so now's the time to do it. We want this done, but we, we want it done in, in a manageable time and not have it drag out forever. And we're proud that we've been able to do a lot of these projects on the state level ahead of schedule. And it's really important that we continue to do that. So uh, I want to thank uh, some of our legislators, uh, federal legislators, Senator Rubio, uh, Congressman Mast and Donalds for really supporting this and being great advocates for the state of Florida every step of the way. Uh, I think with their support, uh, we're going to be able to finally pry some positive outcomes out of the federal government. So I'll bring uh, some of them up to say a few words. So Senator Rubio, floor is yours. Thank you, Governor, and thank you guys for coming. That's a big python right there behind the camera, people. I'm joking with you. No, uh, thank you guys for, for covering this today. You know, the thing about Everglades funding is it's been a state-federal partnership from the beginning. And for a significant period of time, it kind of fell off the grid in terms of being in, in Washington a priority. And it began about late 2016, early 2017. Um, you began to see some consistency, and it became a real priority. One of the reasons why I left the Commerce Committee and went on the Appropriations Committee is to get that, that – consistency. And the key to this is, number one, is obviously the amount of money, right? There has to be enough money allocated to these projects so that they can begin to happen. Because Everglades restoration is not one project. It is a suite of projects that each build upon one another. And none of it matters unless all of it happens. And so part of the thing that fell off is the federal government's commitment really fell off for the better part of over a decade. So beginning in 2016, 2017, you began to see consistency, 
right? Money being able to start going into it. And then we looked at every opportunity we could find to accelerate, right? If there was an opportunity to increase the amounts, and that's what happened under President Trump, if we saw a one-time opportunity to increase the amount assigned in that one particular year, it helped to make up for some of the lost time and push it forward. Earlier this year, every member of the Florida delegation, Republican and Democrat, signed on to a letter making a request for a substantial one-time increase. Um, uh, the bill that passed, you know, actually fell short of that number. And the, the most meaningful thing about it, it was the first time ever that the Army Corps acknowledged, the federal uh, bureaucracies acknowledged, that they could spend that amount of money. Because one of the arguments that was always given by our opponents who wanted that money for other parts of the country was, well, we don't, can't give you that much money because you can't possibly spend it all. And it was the first time there was an admission that they could. This is, I would, from according to all information, is the single most meaningful project in terms of those uh, releases coming out of Lake Okeechobee. And for it not to be included as part of the projects that are being funded, I think speaks, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let people speculate about the politics of it, but I think it speaks as well to the importance that when Congress passes this money, uh, that we put clear guidelines about why we want to follow the plan as we've agreed to and has been laid out with state authorities. If, if the people that are involved in this, as these folks are on a daily basis, are telling you this is the order of priority that we want to do these projects, these are the most important ones, the ones we'd like to finish first, I think whatever federal dollars flow should follow that pattern, and it didn't do so in this case. So my hope is that we'll be able to go back here uh, and we'll have a regular spending bill out of Congress uh, as we do every year, and that in that regular spending bill, not only will that, those guidelines be delineated more carefully so that they can't avoid following the lead of our state partners, but more importantly, that we can continue on that trajectory of consistent and steady funding so you can do the long-term planning that results in real projects happening, contracts being put out, and so forth. Look, I'll close with this. Um, I've always cared about the Everglades. I've been aware of it, but it really is something I've become passionate about since uh, 2016. And one, it's, it is a multifaceted issue. It most certainly has ecological and environmental impacts to it. It's a very unique ecosystem unlike any in the world, but it has extraordinary economic ramifications. We have multiple industries in the state that are dependent on the quality of our water. Um, it impacts virtually every part of our state from central Florida south uh, whether you're a charter captain, whether you're a recreational fisherman, whether you're the tourism industry, whether you're in real estate and the value of your property is degraded by the loss of water quality, uh, it has an extraordinary economic impact on the state. It is one of the single most important things we can do for the future of the state is, is to deal with uh, Everglades restoration. And it is a priority of our delegation and we just need to keep pushing forward on it to make sure that the federal partnership here follows uh, the, the plan as outlined by with our state partners that it's sufficiently funded and when opportunities present itself to accelerate that funding and that it's consistent, that it's every single year and that it doesn't have the sort of drop-offs we experienced for over a decade and a half. Uh, so thank you all for covering this. Thank you, Governor, for inviting us. Thank you. I'd also like to uh, say once there was more interest in the Congress, and I was actually there at the tail end of what Senator Rubio was talking about when they were doing it, uh, prior to taking office as governor, I met with President Trump, explained to him about these discharges and how the Army Corps would discharge the water. I mean, we, the state, we don't control the discharges. I mean, that's done federally. Uh, but we asked, could you manage the lake maybe a little bit different? Congressman Mass was very much involved with kind of helping us, you know, pitch the president on that. And, and to, to his credit, and the Army Corps' credit, 2019, I don't know that we had any discharges. I mean, we had very few. And really, the last three years have been far, far fewer discharges than what you saw in 2018 and 2016 and in those years. And so our view was these projects are important. You can't just snap your fingers and they happen. It does take some time to do. Uh, but if they could manage the lake a little bit better uh, to try to uh, avert discharges when you could, they're the most harmful in the, in the, in the rainy season, then uh, that will really help uh, the quality of the water. And, and by and large, um, you know, they work with us. And so we appreciate it. I know they're going through uh, some other stuff. We've been working with them on that. But you know, if we can get that management to where, hey, there's a lot of factors at play here. We don't want to be sending you know, harmful discharges into these estuaries. Do what you can to minimize uh, and then continue on our projects. You know, we're going to be um, in pretty good shape, you know, if we get all this stuff done. So Congressman Mass has been really instrumental in that. This is an uh, issue he knows probably as good as any elected official that I deal with. And so I want to let him come up and say a few things.
Appreciate it, Governor. You know, the governor came in. He does everything strategically, and he looked at it and he said, what can make the biggest possible difference and help the most people? Well, if we do this reservoir, we can help the Everglades, we can help the East Coast, we can help the West Coast all in one swoop. So let's go out and do that. That's just common sense. The state legislature put the dollars towards this, just waiting on those federal dollars to come in. This was the opportunity to do it. And, you know, let's not be bashful about this. The governor said this is a crown jewel for the, the environment for the state of Florida. That's exactly why you're not seeing one dollar go to it from these federal appropriations, because Governor DeSantis made this a crown jewel for his environment. That's the, the, the Biden administration sending a middle finger over to Florida, unfortunately. And this is what we see over and over again. You just want to say to this administration, make the big deal the big deal. For God's sake, make the big deal the big deal. This is the big deal on the environment here. They're failing to do so. Floridians are going to suffer as a result. They could do a lot better. I'm confident Governor DeSantis could probably get this done ahead of schedule and under budget. And, you know, we've, um, you know, with Brian, of course, you know, we deal a lot with the communities affected uh, by the St. Lucie, and uh, he's been very big champion of that. But, you know, we also have impacts on the other coast of Florida. And when you have these discharges, uh, when you have some of the algae that goes, you know, it's been problematic. I think in 2018, if you look at the west coast of Florida, it was a real big problem with what they were dealing with. And so you know, we wanted to work with, with those communities, and um, Byron Donalds has been uh, working with us on that, and he represents um, you know, those counties in like Lee and Collier uh, who end up dealing with this uh, when you have these massive discharges. So, Byron, why don't you come up? Uh, thank you, Governor, for doing this, and really for being a leader and a champion when it comes to water quality in our state. Uh, I got into the Florida legislature in 2016, so I had the ability uh, to actually vote on the things that our governor and the vision that he's had uh, for the great state of Florida when it comes to water quality. And the legislature, along with our governor, we put our money where, where our mouth was. Um, but this administration has failed. With all the money that's being spent in this quote-unquote infrastructure bill that's bipartisan, you figure they would find some money uh, for the EA re a reservoir. And frankly, the president just failed to do so like he does on so many other things. But this isn't about politics, this is about our environment. I don't care if you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're a liberal, you're a conservative, you're a libertarian. Uh, what we all care about is having a quality environment in Florida. And it is the federal government, government's responsibility to help restore the very thing that they actually broke some 70, 80 years ago. So at this point, the key thing we want is for President Biden to actually turn around and do the right thing which is make sure that there are dollars coming to this project in particular, and that actually the federal government continues the work started under President Trump of funding the necessary projects so Florida can repair not just one of the key parts of our environment, but frankly one of the key parts of all of America's environment, and that is the Everglades system. It starts right here in the EAA Reservoir. We're calling on the administration to frankly just do the simple thing, do the right thing, lay out the appropriations so we can get the work done here in Florida. Thank you, Governor. And, you know, Ron, Alligator Ron, who's on the board and has been involved in this for years, you know, he'll point out this is the most uh, far-reaching restoration in, really in the world when you talk about the Florida Everglades. And uh, to not see one dime, given, you know, how significant this is, this is a monumental effort, uh, really, really disappointing because I think if they would have put a big chunk of that uh, towards this, that would have really helped us. Uh, kind of get back on track on the federal side. We're, we started our stuff early, and you know, we're going to continue to fund it. We've got strong support across the board in the legislature, and it also helps the fact that, you know, we have a massive budget surplus because the state revenue is coming in so hot because of all the economic activity and the fact that people want to be in Florida. And so we're benefiting from that. You know, we clearly have the ability. When my first year, 2019, well, that was pre-COVID, state was doing fine. But we have way more opportunities uh, to be able to do this uh, because of the amount of, of revenue that's coming in with, um, with a very, very strong real estate, other types of markets. So we're there. We're going to be there. We're going to follow everything we said we would do, we will do. Uh, but, man, come on and step up. This is not just a project for people 
in Central and South Florida. I mean, this is really a project for, for all of America. It's so significant. This is something that, um, that a lot of people are watching. So we want the support. Uh, Sean Hamilton, DEP Secretary, has been uh, really helping to uh, push a lot of this stuff forward. And as I mentioned, we've done over 40 projects, either broke ground, um, uh, finished or made substantial progress toward uh, since I've been governor. Uh, and you know, obviously Noah was before Sean. Sean's not missed a beat, and he's really working hard to press all this forward. So I'll let Sean come up and say a few words. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> I, just, I just want to drive home a couple of points you already have, but I think they bear repeating. You know, obviously the governor made the environment a key priority. In just his first week in office, you know, calling for $2.5 billion to be invested in Everglades restoration in Florida water resources in four years. And I know there were probably, there was probably a lot of head scratching at the time and questionable about commitment and follow through. But I think we can put that to rest. You know, Florida is three quarters of the way of having invested over $2 billion over the past three years. And trust me, as a secretary, being able to use the word billion is sometimes inconceivable. Uh, but think about it. And through this continued funding, we have consistently found ways to advance Everglade restoration infrastructure projects that will rapidly improve the health of one of the most important ecosystems, not just in Florida, but in the world. And I, I think that's important because, again, this is, by nature, America's Everglades. So at the direction of Governor Sanders and the support of the legislature, DEP and our partners at the South Florida Water Management District have supercharged state efforts to expedite additional treatment and flow capacity to the south. This includes the construction of the Central Everglades Planning Project and the EA Reservoir. Again, note, starting 12 months ahead of schedule, again, putting 12 months ahead of schedule in a governmental um, entity, again, words you don't often hear in the same sentences, but again, leadership and follow through. To allow us to continue our momentum, the Freedom First budget, FY22-23, continue that state's commitment by allocating over $660 million for Everglades restoration, and that's $128 million specifically for the EA Reservoir. And so under the governor's leadership and the state of, the state of Florida has taken a strong lead to restore our river grass. And, and again, Everglades restoration is a joint effort between the state and the federal government. And so restoring America Everglades is one of the most challenging and ambitious hydrological restoration projects ever undertaken. So it's gonna take all of us working together to get it done. And so again, thank you, Governor, uh, for your commitment to the water quality in Florida and to the South Florida Water Management District. And we look forward to continued support and collaboration with our federal partners to get this done in the completion of major projects. Thank you. All right. Okay, and then finally, the chairman of the South Florida Water Management District, Chauncey Goss, they are uh, really leading on a lot of these projects. We've been able to, over the last couple years, do things like raise the Tamiami Trail. We have more water flowing south uh, than ever before, uh, and they're always looking for ways to do even more. Obviously, this project is a big part of that, uh, but we have done others that have helped do that. So, Chauncey, why don't you come up? Well, thanks very much, Governor. Uh, it's an honor. It's a privilege for me to be standing here as the chairman of the South Florida Water Management District with the governor of the great state of Florida, with the secretary of the DEP, with our senior senator, and with the two congressmen who were most impacted by harmful discharges. I look around and I see just an incredible show of force here, and I sort of think, you know, nothing's impossible, guys. We, should, we, we can fix this. This is something the governing board and the staff were absolutely passionate about it because we all remember what things were like when things were out of balance, when the water wasn't right. We smelled that stench of the red tides, the blue-green algae. We've all coughed, we've rubbed our eyes. We've wondered when the headaches would go away. We've watched in horror. So we looked out and we saw our wildlife, as we saw the fish kills, as we saw the bird kills, as we saw mammals being killed, we saw dolphins, manatees, we even had a whale on Sanibel. Those are just things that we, we, can't, we can't sustain. We saw what this did to the Everglades by reducing the flows of water down there. We saw what it did to our communities, to our economy, to our families when we don't have the water right. And this is something the governor's understood from his first day in office. And his priority and the priority of the governing board have been to reduce these harmful discharges and to send more water to the south. His support for the EAA reservoir, it's never been a secret. And due to his leadership, as you just heard the secretary say, we're way ahead of schedule on that EAA stormwater treatment area. It's something I'm very proud of. And our, the governor's been pushing our staff, and, and we're happy to be pushed. Something the governor didn't tell you is that just nine months ago, 
We stood right here in this very location and we signed the project partnership agreement for the EAA reservoir that the Corps of Engineers needed. So it, it comes a bit of a mystery to me when I look at Washington going on a spending spree and the Corps of Engineers having a $1.1 billion windfall. I was shocked, surprised, not pleasantly surprised to find out that not a dollar of that went to the EAA reservoir, which is our priority, which is what is important. So you look at if we're, going to, if we're going to reduce discharges, which is the goal, it is our priority, and if the EAA reservoir is the head of that or the key to it, then you follow the logic train and you go, why wouldn't you fund it? And that's something that we're going to be trying to find out. I'm interested to see what's in the uh, 22 budget. We'll be seeing that in the next month or so. I'm interested to see what's in the 23 budget, the 22 appropriation and the 23 budget. I hope the EAA reservoir is fully funded. The Florida, Florida as a state is absolutely doing our part. Now, the governor mentioned 43 projects that we've either started, finished, or made meaningful progress on. And what the governor didn't say is that he's been to an awful lot of ribbon cuttings. And that's something, governor, you're not just putting your money where your mouth is and not just asking for money in the budget, but you actually show up at these. And that, I can't tell you how much that means to us on the front lines. Your being here means a lot, and it really it gives, it gives our staff an incredible boost to know what a priority this is for you. So, yeah, we have incredible momentum now. We're going to keep that momentum up. We've got um, the men and women of the South Florida Water Management District are going to keep pushing under the excellent leadership of our executive director, Drew Bartlett. We, we are going to make the progress. We are going to get water right for South Florida because we absolutely owe that to the people. Thanks, Governor. Okay, we're going to keep working on uh, together with the uh, South Florida Water Management District. We'll have DEP. We're going to be working with our federal partners. We're really uh, pleased with the progress we at the state level have made. Uh, the federal is beyond our control, but we absolutely believe that with all that money that they're throwing out, you know, they're spending like $15 billion on speed cameras. I mean, you're, you're driving, they take a picture of your license plate, just send you a, a bill. I mean, I don't like that. It's adding more surveillance in our society. I don't know why you would want to go down that road. Um, but they're putting all this stuff in there, and I'm just thinking to myself, could they not have pride just a heck of it. They did a couple hundred million dollars, but they could they could have done a chunk of that reservoir uh, with, with what they're doing, and that would have been something that would have been very meaningful. But alas, we're here. Uh, they didn't do that. Uh, but we're going forward with our parts. We're going to have a great, uh, I think, legislative session in terms of support for Everglades and our water resources, and we're going to continue to put the pedal on the metal in the state of Florida. Okay, thanks, everybody. You take some questions from people. So what I'm going to say is these people, uh, these Democrats who are trying to use this as some type of political issue to try to smear me as if I had something uh, to do with it, we're not playing their game. You know, some jackasses, you know, doing this on the street. First of all, state law enforcement is going to hold them accountable because they were doing stuff on the overpass. Uh, so, we're, so they're absolutely going to do that, and they should do that. Uh, but I'm not going to have people try to smear me that belong to a political party that has elevated anti-Semites to the halls of Congress like Ilhan Omar, that have played footsie with the BDS movement, that even have people in their party that have cavorted with Farrakhan. No, we're going to take our record in Florida and what we've done, sign the strongest anti-Semitism bill in the country. We've stood, stared down companies who were indulged in BDS, like Airbnb, and we've won. We've provided record funding for Jewish day schools, and we've had the strongest relationship between Florida and Israel than we ever had in terms of education, business, all these tremendous things that have happened since our, since our uh, state visit in 2019. And so they try to play games to try to politicize. Why would they do that? Uh, why would they want to elevate a half dozen malcontents uh, and try to make this an issue for political gain? Well, because they want to distract from the failure that we've seen with Biden. And they're all joined at the hip. All these policies, they all support in Florida 100 percent. The inflation that these policies have caused that's absolutely killing people at the gas pump, in the grocery store, making everything we do in the economy more expensive. You look at the disaster on the southern border, people from like 100 different countries 
pouring into the country illegally, hundreds of thousands of people a month. Uh, they support those policies. Those are bad policies. You look at the crime throughout the country that's really spiraling out of control because of soft on crime policies. We're not going to let that happen in Florida, uh, but that is something that they're tied at the hip with. You look internationally how our country's been humiliated, how these other problems are happening, all because of the failure of leadership. And so that is what they're trying to avoid, uh, is being able to be held accountable for that. So we're not going to let them get away you know, with these stupid things where they're trying to smear somebody uh, unfairly. Um, and I will not be smeared by them. And that's just the reality. And oh, by the way, uh, Florida is probably got it, maybe other than Israel, the number one destination for Orthodox Jews to move to if you look over the last two years. Um, because we do it right, because we have provided tremendous support, and that's just what we're going to continue to do in the state of Florida. Governor, you had mentioned illegal aliens. Yesterday we reported four busloads of illegals were pretty much dumped off in central Florida. You're going after the actual transport companies like American Airlines, but what about the hotels? that are harboring these illegal immigrants? So first of all, we saw the video yesterday. I've had meetings. Uh, I discussed it last night. We had a meeting today in my office uh, where we're getting the details. We've got a lot of assets that are involved in, uh, in first identifying you know, what exactly is going on there and then trying to figure out who's involved. What's pending before the legislature is going to be, I think, anybody who's involved in furthering in illegal migration, you know, can be held accountable. So yes, the bus company that brings them in, if they're bringing them from the southern border uh, here illegally, and I will say, some people say that they're H-2A workers. We'll see if that's true. Obviously, that wouldn't the penalties wouldn't attach if you're bringing people that are lawfully present. Uh, but that would be the transport companies. Uh, but it would also be, I think, hotels. And so if you're knowingly involved in that, you're doing stuff that we don't want. We don't want the problems at the southern border to be imported into the state of Florida. And so people that are instrument, instrumental in that, uh, we want to hold accountable by, of course, denying business opportunities with state and local. Uh, but maybe even more important, providing, re making them pay restitution for all the costs that's going to end up doing. So that could be the bus. And it could also be the hotel. But we need to get that through the legislature. I think we will because I think people are very frustrated uh, with what's going on. We're also asking for, uh, I asked for $8 million. We're actually going to go and ask for more uh, to be able to redirect some of those, these folks uh, to sanctuary jurisdictions. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Uh, we're not going to let Biden's recklessness at the border impose costs uh, on the state of Florida. And so we're going to have that, uh, and we think we're going to get that through as well. So hopefully... We get in middle of March, sign some legislation, sign the budget, then all of a sudden those penalties uh, will be able to attach. And I think my goal, the goal of it all is, you know, if you, if you have the, the penalties, or not, they're not penalties, it's restitution, uh, because they're, they're providing what it's going to cost us to do it. It's a fair thing to say. You know, Governor Childs in the 90s, he sent the federal government a bill because they were dumping people illegally into Florida. And I think that's kind of the model that we're following here. So, so it's restitution to say, hey, here's what you owe by what you're doing. I think a lot of them are just going to say they don't want to mess with doing this in Florida. I think we'll have provided a sufficient deterrent. Uh, and so that's what we're looking to do. Um, but we, we have not gotten all the facts on that yet. But we have a lot of people who are involved in getting the facts. If it turns out that these are folks who are on uh, farm worker visas, then obviously the bus company didn't do anything wrong at that point. But if they're ferreting people who came illegally from the southern border, bringing them all the way into Florida and dumping, then that's when there's going to be a problem. Governor, uh, this may be more appropriate for the Congress. Sure. Senator, but I want to turn it back to the topic today. Sure. Have there been any awareness in the months leading up to the vote about what was in the infrastructure bill and had that issue been brought up with the Democrats at all? Which issue? The AEA? Oh, yeah. I know this is a delegation priority. I mean, I, every member of the Florida delegation, Republican and Democrat, signed a letter asking for a historic increase. The president's original budget, what was it, 131, where it was underneath the baseline from a year ago. And we were asking for a, a big increase. The problem with the infrastructure budget, it was loaded up with all kinds of stuff that had nothing to even do with infrastructure. If this was an infrastructure bill, you didn't even have more votes. Why does it have all this money for the Northeast Corridor and Amtrak and because of New York? Money for California, money for Alaska because of the votes that they were able to get from a center there. And 
beyond the, you know, tree equity, going after racist highways, um, you know, and putting uh, alarms and er, mandatory uh, uh, infant alarms in every car. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's a bunch of money in that bill. It has nothing. Any one of those single projects could have funded this and a bunch like it. Was it brought up? All the time. Of course it is. I mean, it's, it's one of the key components. Look, this is a state-federal partnership. There is a work plan in place, and it's designed according to not just engineering, but what works best, what would have the biggest impact. So you want to prioritize dollars to the projects that have the biggest impact. It is widespread and understood in the delegation that these projects work in conjunction with one another, and this one had vaulted to the top of the list. So everyone understood. I actually think it's the reason, one of the reasons why it wasn't funded is because they understand that that had become a priority for policymakers in Florida. And, and it's unfortunate that, that that's the tack they've taken. But, uh, you know, we're not giving up on it. We're going to go back. We're going to have a regular budget and funding process, uh, we hope. And, and in it, we're going to push for the additional money because uh, from at the federal level. But was it understood that this was not in, I think it was a lot of people assumed right, at some point, that if you're going to fund Everglades in Florida, you're going to do it through the work plan that's been agreed upon with your state partners, not that you would just gerrymander it and pick the things you want to do for political purposes. It's unfortunate. The price is paid by people and, and by the state. On the federal side? Um, Both. Drew, to, uh, best case scenario and worst case. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it's our understanding that the federal government will start a couple of pieces of the reservoir this year. Um, they, haven't, uh, they haven't broken ground yet, but maybe the contract will get awarded this year uh, before October 1st. Um, and then they'll get started, and, you know, some of their time frames have it taking eight to nine years to get built. Please. Yes. Brian's going to. Yeah, let me just give it to you specifically. You asked, was this brought up in Congress about funding the reservoir? Everybody's aware that Pelosi funded a beautiful park with multi-million dollar homes on it in San Francisco. Exactly the way that she brought dollars to that park in her backyard, we said, hey, why don't you do something important for millions of Floridians, Everglades Restoration and the EAA Reservoir? That was rejected by Pelosi and her people as well. So this was addressed at every step, every level along the way. This was not something new to them. It's, I mean, it's just interesting. Just you know, look, I, I'm I'm recovering member of Congress. Like, I'm I'm glad I'm out. But like, you know, I'm watching what they're doing up there. And just as a Floridian, so much of what they're doing is geared towards helping New York and California and these states. I mean, they passed the reconciliation bill, which these guys voted against in the House that would have cut taxes for wealthy people in high-tax states like California, New York. So people in like West L.A., Beverly Hills, they're getting a big tax cut. In Florida, we wouldn't have gotten anything out of that with our folks. And you're wondering, like, why would you be supporting that? Um, it just doesn't make sense. But so much of what they're doing is really designed to help kind of, you know, their political bases. And I think that the, the thing about the Everglades was this isn't really a partisan thing in Florida. I mean, we, we, I mean, pretty much anyone, regardless of party, there's majority support, and we want to get it done, and we want to get it out of this, this same mindset that they're doing. But, you know, what Brian said is certain, right, I mean, you know, if Florida wants something, for whatever reason under this administration, it's like, okay, then you're not going to do. Like, I almost thought with the monoclonals when they cut it, if I came out against monoclonals, then, like, the next day there'd be, like, a truckload that would be there for that. But that's unfortunately kind of what we're dealing with. But we're not going to let it deter us. And I think most people, when they look at this and say, well, gee, uh, this is the biggest uh, spending infrastructure in, probably in American history, right, $1.2 trillion. And to not have one dime for one of the most important projects in the United States, you know, that was a huge, huge whiff. But I think that was why a lot of these guys, you know, opposed it, because they say it's infrastructure. But as Marco pointed out, there's a lot of stuff in there that is not infrastructure. There's a lot of stuff that's more ideological in nature. And I just think it's important to say it. I also just think as an aside, we were able to do $80 million in uh, water infrastructure and resilience projects in South Florida on Friday. And we're proud of that. It's good. There were reports that somehow that was from Biden, false reports that that was from Biden infrastructure. No, no. Those long-term recovery uh, from CDBG block grants, I think that was enacted, you know, when Trump was still president. And so, you know, we got to get, get accurate with what we're doing here. So we're, we're happy with what we've done at the state. We do want them uh, to, to have better priorities. We're also going to be announcing this week uh, additional things that we're doing 
to strengthen Florida's uh, resilience against storms and flooding. And so this will be our Resilience Florida. We're going to do the biggest announcements yet. Uh, so that will be this week. And I know we've gotten great bipartisan support in the legislature for that. So we're going to keep going there. Okay, thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Can we get a group shot? Real quick, can we get a group shot? Everyone will huddle together, please, and thank.